Perfect. So hi, everyone, and thank you one to one for hosting us. We're a West African gold producer, producing about 700,000 ounces per year this year, uh, present in three countries, uh, two mines in Ivory Coast, two in Burkina Faso, and one project in Mali. So before we do the usual presentation, in essence of time, uh, I think the, it's a great opportunity to discuss, in fact, two great themes. Uh, the first one, why is it a great time to invest in gold equities? And the second, why I believe that today is a great time to get into the Endeavor story. So just two charts that will, just to look at where equities or where money has flown into post the gold price increasing. So I thought this chart was very interesting because it shows that between the month of June, July, August, most of the money pouring into the sector has gone into physical gold ETFs. Uh, and we see that in September that has slowed down. And as you see in this next chart, uh, the money has been, in fact, there's been outflows in equity ETFs since the beginning of the year up until August. And in September, when, outf when inflows slowed down into physical gold ETFs, it started to pour into equities. Uh, so this, for me, explains why there's still a lag between the equity prices and the gold price. Uh, from a sector perspective, my feeling is that when uh, producers will start issuing their Q3 results, uh, the sector in general will be perceived as undervalued based on free cash flow metrics and, and EPS. For Endeavor, why is it a great time today? Uh, up until a few months ago, we were marketing Endeavor as a turnaround story. Uh, as some of you might know, we, uh, the new management, joined Endeavor about three years ago, at the end of 2015. And at the time, we were a high-cost producer, uh, producing at over $900 per ounce with an increasing cost curve. We only had four years of visibility in production and producing about half a million ounces. And the goals we set for ourselves were uh, to produce at below $800 per ounce, have 10 years of visibility, and a production size of about 800,000 ounces, because this creates a sustainable business where we're generating enough cash flow to be able to reinvest into the business, into non-sustaining capex, exploration, fund growth, and pay dividends. So why is today a good time? Well, when we were looking at the panel discussion before, the key conclusion for all the investors there was uh, mining companies need to generate net free cash flow. Uh, and for us, the net free cash flow is as of third quarter, because up until now, we've been investing into the business. So in a nutshell, what we've done, our strategy has been very simple. Uh, this, this chart shows mine life at the bottom axis and all in cash costs at the right hand axis. And put simply, we've been focused on getting assets in the bottom right box. So all the assets in the top left, uh, Tabakoto, Nanzima, and Yuga were sold. We built Hyundai, we built ET, we bought Kalana, Karma, and Agba was an initial portfolio. So out of the initial portfolio of three years ago, there's only one mine left, Agba. So the quality of our portfolio has increased thanks to the new two projects that we brought in, that we built ourselves. Uh, as you see here, both assets have all in cash costs below 650. Uh, combined, it's about 500 to 600,000 ounces of production. Both have 10 years mine life and great returns, specifically at you know, 1,500 gold price. But even at 1,250, IRRs were over 30%. This chart shows the production profile, and obviously it includes the three mines that were divested and two mines that were built. Uh, the most important for us is not to chase production size, but mostly to uh, focus on high quality margins, and that's shown with the all-in cash cost curve that's decreased from 1,300 uh, five years ago to uh, below 800 this year. So. We believe we have strong fundamentals and good operating track record. Uh, we're very proud to have met guidance for the last six years, uh, and this year is no different. In terms of fun strong fundamentals, a core focus for us has been exploration. Uh, so many companies you know, say they're going to do exploration. We went one step further. Uh, we believe that we're, as a business, accountable for production and cost, accountable to bring assets in construction, develop them on time, on budget, and on the exploration side, accountable for our spend. So three years ago, when we embarked into a new exploration strategy, we defined our target of finding 10 to 15 million ounces over a five-year period, so ending in 2021. And since then, we've been tracking ourselves against this. So as at 
uh, end of last year. So two and a half years into this strategy, we had already defined 4.2 million ounces. So that's 40% of the target. And discovery costs are very low. Uh, on average, we're less than $15 per ounce of indicated resources uh, and about the same, in fact, for reserves. Over the last three years, we've been building optionality in the portfolio as well. Uh, we have four mines, uh, this portfolio of mines that we've been uh, managing. So as we said before, uh, there's a right time to build assets, there's a right time to hold them, and there's a right time to sell them as well. Uh, so we've been actively managing this portfolio. At the same time, through exploration, uh, we, uh, we have near-term growth, so we're now upsizing ET. Uh, so ET was commissioned in April, and we saw that for about 10 to $15 million, we can increase the plant size from four to five million tons, which will be completed by fourth quarter of this year. Uh, and that four to five million ton upsize was permitted through the exploration success that we've had so far. Uh, Kalana is a project that we bought about th two years ago. Uh, we paid 0.3 times NAV, uh, so got it for a, an interesting price. Uh, we're now working on exploration there. At the same time, we've been ramping up our Greenfields exploration uh, spend, uh, and the results are starting to show. A few weeks ago, we published a 1.2 million ounce resource on Fetacro at 2.5 grams per ton. Uh, this is a uh, Greenfields exploration project, which is now competing with Kalana. Uh, so as a company, our first priority now is to start generating cash flow, so going back to what the panel was talking about, and at the same time, preparing for the next wave of growth, which can come through Kalana or Fetacro. At the same time, about half of our exploration budget, so about uh, $35 million, is being directed to other Greenfields projects to be able to build this optionality in the portfolio. With Endeavor, you also have exposure to what we consider being the fastest growing gold region uh, in the world. Uh, it's the fourth largest producing region when you start adding up uh, the West African countries. Uh, for us, we're based in Abidjan, that's where our operating team is, and we really view West Africa as a region. It takes us between one to three hour flight to get to any one of our sites. In terms of exploration spend, it's the third largest exploration spend globally. Uh, and Endeavor represents about 15% of this. So for us, looking at where exploration dollars are being spent today is a good foreshadow of where future production will come from. Uh, and the reason that the industry is investing heavily is because uh, it's the, over the last decade, it's where most of the ounces were found globally. Why is today a good time for Endeavor uh, to be invested in? Because we're at that cash flow inflection point. Over the last three years, we've invested over a billion dollars in the company to build our two assets and through exploration. Uh, Q2 was when we finished to build ET. Q3 is when we expect to be net net free cash flow positive for the first time in our history. So we'll now be looking at our capital allocation strategy, uh, as I mentioned before, to have the right mix between reinvesting in the business and being able to give back to shareholders. Near-term catalyst, a lot of exploration has been done to date, and this is starting to be converted into reserves and mine life extensions. Uh, we've already published 700,000 ounces of reserves at Hyundai, and we expect to publish two new discoveries later this year. So in gray on this chart are the additions expected to be added by year-end. So we're targeting 250,000 ounces per year, 10 years mine life at Hyundai. And on ET, on this slide, we're targeting the same. Uh, so in gray, we need to add about half a million ounces to achieve this target. Good news is that we've already found these ounces as they were published in June, and we'll now be converting them to reserves. So just to conclude, uh, to, to recap, I think that the gold space is at a very interesting spot right now where equities are still lagging the gold price. And for Endeavor, and that's why we're marketing here today uh, in New York, we believe that it's a great opportunity to get into our stock ahead of our Q3 and Q4 results. Thank you, everyone.